Earlier in our lectures, we talked about the different tissue types. And in connective tissue, we realized that some people classify blood as a connective tissue. Uh, we only briefly talked about blood, but since it's such an important part of our body and many animals' bodies, we'll talk a little bit more about it today. Uh, blood is made of red and whitish cells. Red blood cells are what you typically think of when you think of blood. They're the ones that carry oxygen from the lungs to the tissues because they're full of hemoglobin, which binds oxygen. And hemoglobin, when it's bound to oxygen, is bright red. And that's what gives the red blood cells their reddish color. Uh, platelets are also part of blood. And they're kind of whitish in color. Uh, like red blood cells, platelets do not have DNA. Um, they are too small. Uh, they're just made from other cells that have DNA. And they're sort of pinched off and do not have DNA inside of them. Um, they help it when blood needs to be clotted. If you get a wound or a cut, the platelets are there to help organize a network of fibrin fibers that act as a protective net that keeps any blood from flowing out. So that's what they're there for. Um, and then, of course, there are true white blood cells that have DNA and are the task force for protecting your body from infection. They use the bloodstream to get where they need to go. Uh, they can flow like red blood cells through the blood vessels, or they can actually roll along on the inside of one of the blood vessels. And while they're rolling, they're constantly sensing for signs of infection that they get from the cells that, wall, that line the walls of the blood vessel. And when they get that signal, they stop rolling and change their shape, so from going from a spherical shape to a very flat shape, so that they can crawl between the, the uh, seam between two cells. So we learned about the epithelial cells that form layers and the endothelial cells, which are a type of epithelial cells that line the inside of blood vessels that release nitric oxide. Well, they have little seams between them. And the white blood cells, when they're nice and flat, can slip through those and attack any uh, infections that are going on behind. Um, Different types of white blood cells fight off infection differently. They don't all do what I was just talking about. Some swallow pathogens. Others release uh, small proteins that uh, help bind to the pathogens, um, the bad guys that are inside the cell. And these, many of these uh, proteins are kind of like a SWAT team. They all work together. And they pierce a hole in the pathogens to mess up their electrical and chemical gradients the kind that power the cells. So once there's a giant hole in those bad guy pathogens, then those bad guys die. Um, and, uh, an example of another form of proteins that are used to protect our body are these Y-shaped proteins that you may have heard of called antibodies. Antibodies have a Y-shape because uh, they bind not just with one side, but two sides. So if if one side binds to a pathogen, the other side can bind uh, to it too, and that really increases the tightness with which the antibody can bind. And it's uh, not just a V-shape because there's a tail end that can send the signal to the rest of the immune system saying, here's the bad guy, let's attack it, let's destroy it. Uh, sometimes the tails are already held in place by another larger protein that allows this to create sort of a multiple attack. And it looks really cool because they're all pointing outward and it's very symmetric and beautiful and looks kind of deadly because it is. Um, <clears throat> so these are the kinds of things you learn about as you learn more about biology. Why do we need antibodies against uh, um, diseases? And why do we have to have them if we're going fight to fight off infections? Um, an activity that you can do as you think about uh, these different issues is uh, think about what it would take if everybody in the whole city worked from home. Okay, they sat at their computers and they interacted with people at their workplace just through the computers. Would we still need roads? Would we still need airlines? What would we need? Why would we need them? In what situations would we still need those things? And how are those needs for roads and airlines and trains 
like the needs that the circulatory system has and the blood system. So just thinking about how important blood is in an animal body or like a human body, think about how important our road system are, is in our city, even if everybody works from home. If you're going a little deeper, now would be a great time to read from Biobook the leaf, what are the major cell types in human blood? And to review the leaf, what does the liquid portion of human blood contain? The first leaf tells you that there are four main cell types in blood. Uh, for example, erythrocytes, like red blood cells, platelets, uh, and three types of granulocytes and other types of leukocytes. And the second uh, leaf talks about the plasma and the proteins in the liquid portion of blood. 